Hello my squishies. Welcome to the Caledonian Wool Company Shetland Sunrise Felt Along. I should probably mention that this is sped up by four times the speed. I'm not expecting you to felt this fast. The full hour long felting that I did for this is available. The link will be in the description below. So let's get started. We need a foam mat to protect our worktop, some free felt to felt onto, a needle holder and some needles. To use the holder, take out the plug, place the needle in the groove with the hook end over the small end of the plug, then insert it back into the holder. You can also just hold the needles as you're felting. To make the picture, we use wool tops in various colours. A little goes a long way. To pull out a section, make sure your hands aren't too close together and the wool isn't twisted. Now we're ready to start. Let's get felting. Using this one I made earlier as a guide, we're going to take some white wool and gently lay it down on the fibre. Now take the needle and stab the tops into the pre-felt up and down, making sure not to bend the needle. We're only felting gently just now to build up the pitch. We'll go over it later and felt it in properly. Moving on, we'll get some yellow and lay it out below the hill line, leaving a band of white. We're then going to mirror that in the sky. We're aiming to have the transitions in the sky smoother. Below in the water is a reflection with waves and ripples so you can have more variation of colour. We're leaving this centre sunburst white and working our way fading from yellow to orange to blues as it goes away from that sunburst. Always trying to mirror what's in the sky and in the water below the hills. We're going to leave filling in the hills till last because we want them to stand proud, almost on top of the sunrise, building up layers of colour to give the picture depth. It's nice when little vecks of another colour show through. Making sure that we go over the edges of the template on the pre-felt. It's better to have too much colour than too little, as when it's in the frame we can sometimes see gaps at the edges. You can always test out colour placement by just laying it on top and not felting it down. Every so often you want to pull the pre-felt off of the mat that you're felting on as it can get stuck to it. To do this, gently pick up a corner and pull away. You can see the fibres poking through the back. That's a sign of felting. Give it a rub and a smoosh with your hands. You can even out the picture. Now we're going to add a little bit of light blue. Just thin wisps. You can check every so often with the frame that the picture's coming out how you like it. The lovely thing about needle felting is especially at this early stage, you can easily pull the fibres off if you don't like where they are and start again. Adding in some dark blue at the top and the bottom now, and a little bit around the edges. A little really does go a long way with needle felting. Just tiny sections of fibre can make all the difference. Now it's time to add in our hills. Taking the dark brown, and you can be quite strong here. Form a hill shape just below the middle of your picture. If you want, you can take some white to add in the twinkly lights of a town. I imagine that this is Lurwick on Shetland. It's starting to come together now and looks like a picture. I still need to do a lot of felting and tweaking and playing. It's a good idea now to take it off the mat again and put it in the frame, see how it's looking. Are there any places you want to change, or are you happy with it? I want to add in more yellows and oranges to give it more definition below the hill line and the reflections. Here I'm pulling up some blue that I'd already laid down put a bit more orange underneath and give it some depth. I just noticed I had a wee gap of white in the centre. A little bit of orange just fills that in nicely. I'm working in some more dark blue now to give it some nice reflections. Needle felting is fun and relaxing. Yours might not look exactly like mine. Every time I make one it's slightly different, but that's the fun of it. I'm slowly layering up colours now. It's always a good idea to take breaks, come back to it with fresh eyes, hold it up, take a photograph of it, look at it upside down, 
give yourself a fresh perspective. I'm really happy with how the main colours are looking just now. So I'm going to leave you, let you enjoy the music, while I felt away adding a little bit of colour here and there. I'll join you again near the end. If, like me, you've left it on the mat for too long and it's time to pull it off, pull it off gently, little bits at a time, don't force it, it'll come. Give it a good smooshing afterwards to reshape it. So here, I've been building up the hills to give them a bit of depth, because you can go semi-3D with this kind of felting, but I've felt it over my town lights. So I'm going to add them back in again, this time scrumfling out the wool up into small balls and felting it in. I'm going to spend a wee bit of time now felting everything down, making sure it's nice and secure. This is a picture, so it's not going to get much wear and tear, but if you are going to make a high use item with it, consider wet felting your final picture. After felting away for a while, I'm really happy with it. I did want to work on the sun though, so I covered up the white with yellow and then added just the tiniest sliver of white on top and just a few final tweaks and I'm pretty happy. I am going to put it down for the night, come back to it with fresh eyes in a day or two, but I think most of it is there now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and if you're felting along, you've got something that you're happy with. I really appreciate it if you could give me a like and subscribe, or join our Facebook group where we post photos of the pictures we've made. If you want to buy this kit or others like it, head on over to my website caledonianwool.com. That's it from me, thank you my squishies. <laughs>